Hello friends, welcome to today's session of business economic analysis, session number four. And we are dealing with, wow. Why study economics? Artha Shastra now, yaki study maadbeku. So first thing I want to tell you, congratulations because you have taken economics as one of your major subject. Congratulations, you have taken, you have made the right choice. Now the question is not only about making the right choice, but working on this choice to make a career out of this economics. So the reason this particular topic was introduced in your new economic policy, basic economics analysis is students take economics to study, but they don't know why they have taken economics and what they can get out of economics. So this small session will try to put light on that particular area. Why study economics? Artha Shastra now yaki study maadbeku. So you can see the different books are there, Wealth of Nations, Adam Smith, Microeconomics, XYZ author, Principles of Economics by Alfred Marshall, Macroeconomics by some author. So this is what your life is going to be if you want to proceed with economics as your passion. So congratulations once more and the biggest thing is you are standing, you are sitting in front of your laptop or your mobile and you are watching this video. This shows how interested you are. Let's move ahead and see what is economics and what you can get out of economics. So why study economics? Economics is a study of mankind in the ordinary business of life. A simple definition of economics which was given by Alfred Marshall in his book, The Principles of Economics. Now actually it's just a first line. The actual definition is economics is a study of mankind in the ordinary business of life where it inquires how a man earns his income and how he spends his income to make his living or to spend his limited income among the various choices or wants he has. So that is what is economics. Andre, then in the now business life only now in Martivit, that is what is economics. So, so wrote Alfred Marshall, the great in 19th century and in his book, Principles of Economics. Why you should study economics or why should you as a student embark on the study of economics? There are three reasons given by N. Gregory Mankiw. Here friends, this is, uh, this is the author of the book Microeconomics and thanks to one of my uh, colleague, my friend, uh, Professor Sara, who recommended this book to me and there I got most of the ma material, why study economics. So according to N. Gregory Mankiw, he says there are three reasons for you to study economics. What are these three reasons? Why study economics? The first reason is, the first reason is to study economics is that it will help you understand the world in which you live. So what Gregory Mankiw says, it will help you to know and understand, understanding the world you live. I will come to it shortly what it means. The second reason is, the second reason to study economics is that it will make you a more astute participant in the economy. Astute participant means someone who is more aware. And the third reason to study economics is that it will give you a better understanding of both the potential and the limits of economic policy. So coming to the first part, understanding the world. Is there any need to understand the world? when you speak about a country or if you speak about the world, that is all the countries in the world, how economics will help you to understand this thing. Friends, remember we are living in geopolitical scenario. We are living in geoeconomic scenario. We are living in political economic scenario. All the countries in the world are related to each other either in terms of their geography, 
politics and economics so all these three things are interrelated and if you understand this particular thing the economy it becomes very easy to understand why the politics is so and what is the influence of the geography so first thing is when we study economics this study of economics enables us to understand actually what is happening in the country what is happening in the world how the different countries in the world are related to each other that is what is understanding the world the second one is astute participant in the economy astute and churuku that is when we study economy we start participating in as to what is happening in the economy so we become the decision makers because we know how the economy is working and lastly mantu says the third reason to study economics is that it will give a better understanding of the economic policy what is economic policy there is going to be a full session on economic policy the policies which are undertaken by the government for the improvement of the economy these policies can be in any of the sectors of the economy it can be in the agriculture sector it can be in the industrial sector or it can be in any other sector for example now uh, you know something is going on in agriculture sector with regard to agriculture policy and that is called as farm bill many farmers are protesting against it and before 4 years there was something called as demonetization demonetization that is withdrawal of the 500 and 1000 rupees notes then a year later there came gst long back there was something called as new economic policy that is liberalization privatization and globalization so you can see so many things are happening around us so friends if you study economics you will understand the pros and cons of this particular policies you will understand whether it is good for us how much it is good for us if it is bad how much bad it is for us how far our future the future of our generations will be impacted by this policies so this is well understood by you as a student of economics remember there is a huge difference between layman and you as a student a layman who knows nothing about economics he can speak many things he can just give his opinions but you people when you study economics and when you discuss about economic policy you don't give your opinion based on uh, rumors you give your opinions based on facts you know the ins and outs because you are a student of economics so this are the main reasons why you should study economics this is as per gregory mantue thus the principles of economics can be applied in many of our life situations so there are so many situations that are happening in our around us so all this thing we can apply economics in the future bhavishyanally you can find yourself reading the newspaper there if you have studied economics it will help you running a business if you have become an entrepreneur there economics help you or if you are sitting in some ac office you have become a big officer even there economics will help you so economics is all around us and it is applied in our day to day life so in any sphere of your life this will be helpful to you no knowledge is a waste knowledge and definitely knowledge of economics is never going to be waste never it is going to die never it is going to fade so you will be glad that you have studied economics why should the information in economics be taught and learned let us look at three criteria that seem widely accepted for sifting out what students may profitably learn utility why study economics is there utility is economics useful to the society is economics useful to an individual yes economics is useful to the society and economics is useful to an individual in many ways we can study about 
economics in many ways economics will help us in our day to day life at an individual level it will help us at a larger level as a society as a country studying economics will give us pleasure so just just imagine if i have written something okay just imagine if i write something like this y is equal to a plus b x or if i write something like u is equal to a b x something like that q d is equal to f of t so this thing will be of no use to you even if you read it somewhere if i say gdp if i say gnp if i say inflation if i say deflation these things are just they become black alphabets about which you don't know anything and most of the students face this particular problem when they read the newspaper and all those things or when they are discussing things they are not aware because they have not studied economics so studying economics will give you the pleasure it is pleasure to know the complicated phenomenon happening around you if you speak about demonetization what is the merits and demerits of demonetization how it has affected the economy if you speak about gst what is the pros and cons of gst how it is affected the or uh, contributed to the progress of the country if you speak about new economic policy liberalization privatization globalization how it has helped us uh, over a period of time the first generation reform the second generation reform so all these things become simple to you if you study economics so economics is a way of life and when what is happening around you in your life if you know about it it's really pleasure to know such complicated things that are happening around you and it is emancipation what is emancipation liberation from ignorance it is related to the point 2 so studying economics will not only give you pleasure will not only give you that satisfaction but it will also bring you out of the darkness it will bring you out of ignorance and give you more power to understand and analyze what is happening around you it may be in the market it may be in the politics it may be in the firm it may be at the national level or international level how the things are changing thinking like an economist we understood now why we should study economics now we'll understand thinking like an economist so these are some of the famous economists uh, the again their mention will be made in the last topic so in the first panel adam smith alfred marshall david ricardo karl marx so these are the classical economists you can see and at the bottom we are having john maynard keynes the father of macroeconomics adam smith the father of microeconomics milton friedman the father of monetarist economics and there very important you can see something in our tricolor amartya sen the winner of nobel prize in economics jagdish bhagwati one of the renowned economist that we are having raghuram rajan uh, the former governor of rbi uh, manmohan singh uh, there is no need to speak anything about him such a, such a huge personality and geeta gopinath okay most of you all know about her because now she is into a very happening position in imf and at last there is mohammad yunus okay a person from bangladesh who has also got nobel prize for his contribution in microfinance so what is this these people are economists so we are having in front of the economists if you look at their faces you can see they are smiling at us and they are happy that we are studying economics and we are going to study what they have told about economy through their various books through their various articles through their various publications every field of study has its own language and its own way of thinking uh, any any field you yavad bekad new subject thavare okay yavadu ond vishayanalli or santada ond thinking irtati for example mathematicians talks about axioms they talk about integrals they talk about matrices always if you are a hardcore mathematician while getting down the steps or climbing the steps some calculations will be going on in your mind it may it is running behind the mind that is how the economists think psychologists talk about ego uh, id 
super ego cognitive dissonance they speak about schizophrenia they speak about so many mental illnesses they try to find out the iq and eq of the person these are the things this is the normal terminology of psychologists lawyers talk about trial is a case nadita ide summons bandanilla cognizable offense non cognizable offense conviction are to eviction are all these things acquittal are i'm sorry it is acquittal so building the eviction agide nilla all these things we speak we see lawyers speaking so this is the terminology of lawyers doctors talk about surgery they talk about diagnosis they talk about prognosis ecg in ide blood in ide random sugar in ide this is their normal thing so this is how the different professions think so as psychologist as lawyers as doctors even economists are not different they also speak they are ha- also having a particular way of thinking they are having their own language when economists are speaking they are speaking about demand supply tax budget inflation deflation what is happening to the gdp what is the current market price what is the factor prices what is all those things economists speak about so as any other profession even economists are having their own language and their own, own way of thinking thinking like an economist just we just as we cannot be mathematicians or psychologists overnight one ratriyalli now ganit shastra tajna athwa manovigyan nalli yavudu prakarad Uh, you can say uh, important position we can't get it in one night other slog now prayatna madbek other slog now sakashta bevar besbek that is what is you want to think like an economist it takes time one dinalli had dinalli new economics age think madu sadilla you need to cultivate that thing in you so we need to develop and practice the skill of being able to think like an economist peer we need to develop we need to practice the skill of being able to think like an economist they say if i give you today guitar ivat ni guitar musician agre andre ivat na guitar kotre naali ni musician agangilla adu salag yen madbek you practice madbek adu salag you have skill develop madbek aa skill band mele you will become a musician bare ni matra guitar idre ni guitarist agangilla adu salag ni parisham padibek same to be a musician you need to practice you need to develop the skill to be an economist also you need to practice and you need to develop the skill and you need to think like an economist the economist as a scientist do you think economists are scientists yes definitely economists are scientists the only difference is economists try to address their subject with a scientific objective with a scientist objective with a scientist outlook they approach the study of the economy in much the same way jaise you can see a physicist approaches the study of matter the way a biologist approaches the study of life they devise theories they collect data and then they analyze this data after analyzing this data okay they try to verify and see whether the theory is right or to refute them so economist as a scientist yes they also have scientific o- outlook like a physicist like a biologist they also collect the data they analyze the data they attempt to verify the data whether to accept the theory or to reject the theory that is what economists do as a scientist i'll give you one simple example see here in this picture what the man is telling beta i am a social scientist that means i can't explain you electricity or anything like that but if you want to know about people i can tell you that is what is economist you know nange electricity bage kelre nan gotilla you know nange evolution of human nature helre nan gotilla you know nange biology bage anta kelre nan gotilla but if you want to know about people rational people economic behavior of the people i can explain you that is what is economist i have taken this uh, picture uh, from the net and this picture was available in mankiw's book then coming to the next point the essence of science science nalli enide vigyan nalli enide how it is the scientific method the dispassionate development 
ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಥೇರೀಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹೌ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ಗೆ ನಾವು ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ನೋಡ್ತೀವಿ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ವಿ ಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಥೇರೀಸ್ ದ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನ್ಕ್ವೈರಿ ಈಸ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಅಪ್ಲಿಕೇಬಲ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ಅ ನೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ನಾಮಿ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಡಿ ದ ಅರ್ತ್ ಗ್ರಾವಿಟಿ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಪೀಷಿಸ್ ಇವಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಅರ್ತ್ ಗ್ರಾವಿಟಿ ಅಂದರೆ ಏನು ಲಾ ಆಫ್ ಗ್ರಾವಿಟಿ ಫಿಸಿಕ್ಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂತು ಇವಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೀಷೀಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಡಾರ್ವಿನ್ಸ್ ಥೇರಿ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬಯಾಲಜಿ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಹೌ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಸೈನ್ಸಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಅವರು ಸಂಶೋಧನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ನಾವು ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಆದರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆರಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ಎಕ್ನಾಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆರಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ವರ್ತನೆ ನಾವು ಅಂದಾಜು ಮಾಡೋದು ಭಾಳ ಕಠಿಣ ಇದೆ ಹೌ ವಿ ಬಿಹೇವ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡೈನಾಮಿಕ್ ಇನ್ ನೇಚರ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಟಿಕ್ ಸೆಟಪ್ ದ ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವೇಷನ್ ಥೇರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ಅಬ್ಸರ್ವೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ಯಾಕ್ ನ್ಯೂಟನ್ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರ್ಬೋದು ಓಕೆ ನ್ಯೂಟನ್ the famous 17th century scientist and mathematician became intrigued okay he became more curious one day when he saw an apple fall from a tree what did he see what he saw something if you throw in the air it will come down something you throw up it will come down so he was sitting under a tree apple tree uh, it is a fact we still don't know whether the fruit is apple but it has been told and we follow it yes newton was sitting under the apple tree i am not sure whether it was apple tree or mango tree or which tree so there he saw that apple fell from the tree this observation motivated newton to develop the theory called as theory of gravity that applies not only to apple falling to the earth but to any objects in the universe see this is what newton came to the conclusion it is not only apple that falls on the ground anything that you throw up will fall on the ground how did he come to know because he observed one phenomenon he observed a fruit falling from the tree he was wondering is this fruit why did it fall down why didn't it go there or remain there so here came the theory of gravity this is what is scientific method and beyond that we came to know that if you want to fly the aeroplane or the helicopter you need to activate the anti gravity and that is what is the aeronautics that we saw that is the development of scientific technical engineering field this interplay between theory and observation also occurs in the field of economics bare newton or on the apple bidin and no di adar mele theory of gravity madar bare physicist astre alla now arth shastra tadnyaru adu madabodu even in economics we can see the interplay between theory and observation how see i'll give you an example an economist might live in a country experiencing rapidly increasing prices and be moved by this observation to develop a theory of inflation so economist or in madabodu now let us say we are staying in a country let us say india and in india the fuel prices are increasing the price of fuel is fuel prices increasing and because of this increase in the fuel price you may say we are facing inflation so illa enar fuel prices increase aagta ide ni observe maartta idiri we are observing it and aa aadhar mele naavu helthevi inflation and theory now derive maartta idivi so this is what is scientific you observe something and you develop a theory now it is not it will not stop here ಈ ಥೇರಿಗೆ ನಾವು ಪ್ರೂವ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಪ್ರೂವ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ನಾವು ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಟಿಕಲಿ ನಾವು ಪ್ರೂವ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕಲಿ ನಾವು ಪ್ರೂವ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ದ ಥೇರಿ ಮೈಟ್ ಅಸರ್ಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಹೈ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಅರೈಸಿಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟೂ ಮಚ್ ಮನಿ ಆರ್ ದ ಥೇರಿ ಮೇ ಅಸರ್ಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಅರೈಸಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೈಸ್ ದ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ದ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಸೊ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಪ್ರಿಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಟೂ ಮಚ್ ಮನಿ or increasing the tax rate now again see in this thing why the government wants to print more money because there is cash crunch with the government why the government wants to increase the tax yakandre the government is having low amount of money low revenue to spend so in either of this case you print money or you increase the taxes either in the inflation or activity so observation is a theory is a to test this theory the economist now in marti we we collect the data we analyze the data yav data collect marti you know we collect the data on the prices we collect the data on money or we collect the data 
of different countries and then we make use of statistics and if growth in the quantity of money is not related to the rate at which prices are increasing if rise in fuel prices is not related to inflation then now in martivi then the economist would doubt the validity of the theory of inflation so whether to accept this theory or to reject the theory we collect data we analyze the data and we go through statistical analysis and then we come to the conclusion to accept the theory based on observation or to not to accept it so friends when we speak about scientific method the role of observations and the role of assumptions plays a very important role so if you ask a physicist how long it would take a marble to fall from the top of a 10 story building so if you just say and there is a building 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 10 story building ellinni one marble kelak chaldare yes the time back the marble from this top 10th floor to come to the ground what is the time required so if the physicist wants to tell you the time that is required he will make certain assumption yav prakar vohigalu kalpane martaravaru he will make the assumption that yavudu prakarada air effect illa there is no air okay there is no gushing air and this particular marble is a normal marble and there is no external effect that may hinder the fall of the marble so take into consideration all these assumptions he will say that it may take so many x y z seconds so this number he has derived based on assumption so economists also make assumptions for the same reason you know friends in economics there is a saying if there would be no assumptions and criticisms there would be no economic theories so assumptions can simplify the complex world and make it easier to understand yav prakara assumption now international trade study maduvaga we say two countries two products we said two by two model vastavik jivanalli bare erda countries erda vastagalanna trade maartare illa now illi en assume maartivi two countries two products are trading so this becomes theory of uh, international trade classical theory of international trade so based in this assumption that is two by two model we are able to explain a complicated theory uh, law of demand law of demand alli en assumption ide setter is peribus other things remaining constant if price increases demand decreases but in uh, we maartta idivu now kalpane maartta idivi nam adayana alli yavudu badlavane agangilla okay uh, sambandha patta sarakalalli yavudu badlavane agangilla all these assumptions so based on these assumptions we say quantity demanded is a function of price whatever function there is a inverse relationship so there are so many examples that we speak about and this examples or this theories when i'm speaking it is based on certain assumptions the art in scientific thinking whether in physics biology or economics is deciding which assumptions to make that is very important bare assumptions madudalla yav prakarada assumptions madudu adu bali important ide when we are speaking about scientific thinking economic models ಸೊ ಮಾಡಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಏನು ನಾವು ಹೈಸ್ಕೂಲ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡೀವಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಬಯಾಲಜಿ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಇದ್ದರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ರೆಪ್ಲಿಕಾಸ್ ಇರ್ತವೆ ಯಾವ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ಆ್ಯನೋಟಮಿ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಸೊ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ದ ಮಾಡಲ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ದ ಹೃದಯದ ಮಾಡಲ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ಲಿವರ್ದ ಮಾಡಲ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ಕಿಡ್ನಿ ಯಾವ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ಇದೆ ಅದಿರ್ಬೋದು ನಾವು ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಸೈನ್ಸಸಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋದರೆ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಸ್ಕೆಲಿಟನ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ತವೆ ಒಂದು ಮಾಡಲ್ ಇರ್ತೈತಿ ಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಇರ್ತೈತಿ ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ಆ ಮಾಡಲ್ ನೋಡಿ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗ್ತಿದೆ ಓ ಈ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ನಮ್ಮ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಆರ್ಗನ್ಸ್ ಇದೆ ಈ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ಇದು ವರ್ಕ್ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಸೊ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಸೈನ್ಸಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ಮಾಡಲ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ತೀವಿ ಅದೇ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ಎಕ್ನಾಮಿಕ್ಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿನೂ ಮಾಡಲ್ಸ್ ಇದೆ ಅದರ ಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಮಾಡಲ್ಸ್ ಇರೋಂಗಿಲ್ಲ ಆ ಮಾಡಲ್ಸ್ ಏನಿದೆ ಅಂದರೆ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಮಾಡಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮೆಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ಫ್ರೆಡ್ ಮಾರ್ಷಲ್ ಹೂ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮೆಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎಕ್ನಾಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಎಕ್ನಾಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡಲ್ಸ್ ಟು ಲರ್ನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಮಾಡಲ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಕಂಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಯಗ್ರಾಮ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಸೇ ಕ್ವಾಂಟಿಟಿ ಡಿಮಾಂಡೆಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಥಮೆಟಿಕಲ್ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಮಾಡಲ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್
this is also a model so both these models are speaking about law of demand and what is law of demand it is a law which is based on certain assumptions and what are those assumptions ceteris paribus so this assumptions determine law of demand if you relax the assumptions the law of demand will not work but based on the assumptions law of demand will work and why we frame this law after <coughs> observation after observing the economic agents we observed we assumed and we framed the theory and after assuming when we collect the data and keep certain factors constant then if it is statistically significant we accept the theory as it is or else we reject it so models to understand working of the economy one example there is something called as the circular flow model which will be seeing in eighth session then there is one more thing called as uh, the model to understand the allocation of resources and that is the production possibilities frontier or production possibility curve how far utpadana sadhyatya reke these things we understand in economic models and these models are based uh, derived from mathematics statistics and economic theories that is econometrics the economist as a policy advisor the last part often economists are asked to explain the cause of economic events e uh, for example uh, when we speak about something that is happening e dyad ka maha arthik mugato ya kya to what was the reason for that thing new economic policy e dyad banto what was the reason what is the cause and what is the effect of that thing for example nirudyoga hechide okay that to in teenagers hechide ya ke de when compared to young people and old people when the unemployment is high why it is so sometimes economists are asked to recommend it policies hing idre idu sulagi in parihar ide new nam kodri solutions kodri suggestions kodri so what for instance should the government do to improve the economic well being of the teenagers ee rite sakka samasya galu ide poverty ide inflation ide economic growth idu samasya ide unemployment ide with regard to environmental pollution ide with regard to uh, there are so many other economic problems that is happening today okay there is crime the crime rate hechakta ide crime rate yak hechakta ide crime rate in the yen uh, aagta ide parallel economy black market hechakta ide parallel economy yav rite na kadme maadbek all these questions that are there they are having economic relevance and a person who has not studied economics may not be in a good position to give the answers so friends ile one book suggest martin now free economics and free economics is a book where the economists have written it taking the life case studies in our general life as to how the things are happening over there why teachers and students cheat in the examinations and what happens if uh, a particular law uh, tells that uh, in a particular xyz country pregnancy is legitimate and when pregnancy becomes legitimate after 20 years after 25 years how it has dropped down the crime rate so this type of things that is happening all these answers can be given by economists so what economists are trying to explain the world see listen when the economists are trying to explain to the world they are scientists ille now in explain madak prayatna martivi explain maduvaga en aagtivi we become the scientists and when they are trying to help improve it they become policy advisors so here when we are explaining we are scientist when you are trying to improve something we are becoming policy advisors this is what is the role of economist as a policy advisor i'll just take few examples uh, economist as policy advisors he is dr manmohan singh so he was in the uh, time of indira gandhi prime minister was indira gandhi from 1970 to 1976 as a economic policy advisor he was governor of reserve bank of india he was deputy chairman of planning commission of india he was advisor to prime minister of india as on economic affairs this is the reason i brought this thing so here i am speaking about advisor here man dr manmohan singh was an advisor he was also the chairman of university grants commission he was the finance minister of india during which time we got our new economic policy that is 
liberalization privatization globalization it was during his tenure and then dr the narsimha rao was a prime minister and he was also a member of parliament of rajya see for how many years right from 1991 till 2019 he is into politics as a mp and lastly he was a prime minister of india so see his achievements all this is possible because he he and economics this is what happens to us i am sitting in front of you and telling something about economics because i have studied economics i may not be a very expert economist but i am proud to be a post graduate in economics then comes one more person rakesh mohan uh, he was uh, the economic advisor during atal bihari vajpayee's government so he was the deputy governor of rbi he was the chief economic advisor as well as he was the executive director of international monetary fund so on what basis he became the deputy governor and on what basis he became the chief economic advisor imf international monetary fund he is the executive director again because he is an economist then the next is the most beloved person raghuram rajan he was uh, the economic advisor i'm sorry it is not during the time of atal bihari okay but during the time of dr man mohan singh during his time he was the economic advisor uh, so raghuram rajan was the chief economist at the imf was appointed as chief economic advisor succeeding kaushik basu kaushik basu is also an economic advisor he presided raghuram rajan and uh, raghuram rajan was also the governor of rbi for 3 years so see how these people play a very important role he is also people say that he is not an economist but he has studied economics and he knows how the economy happens and what happened the recession during 2008 okay the global meltdown it was he who had predicted about sub prime crisis okay not to go so just for your information so this is what raghuram rajan is during the time of manmohan singh and now at present we are having krishna murthy subramanian again i'm sorry he is under the narendra modi's government as the chief economic advisor so you can see he was also in the expert committee of sebi and the rbi and he is into the advisory council for the government he is the one at present who is there with the government so friends if you want to know if in a company if this is board of directors manager and this is the different levels of staff economists are always on top they will not be guiding the lower segment people the blue collar people how to work but they will be guiding the board of directors the manager as to how to frame the economic policies that is what is the strata economists enjoy so here you can see one uh, on small picture uh, this is very interesting the rise of the economists andre you know, what is this the rise of the economists this is a simple um, uh, you can say statistics that is taken as to there is a huge uh, newspaper the new york times new york times only est sala economist bagge mention madar as compared to other professions so what you what came into the picture from 1860 to 2014 new york times only now economist bagge est articles nodivi okay or we have seen articles of speaking about economist Uh, so there are various professions: demographers, with our psychologists, with our historians, with our economists. There, other day economics, bagge, yes, sala churchya gide. Mentioned by, measured by mentions in the New York Times. 
so you can see see here see 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 it is the economist uh, in 2000 around 1.5 percent of the articles was speaking about economist and compared to other professions demographer it was almost nil uh, anthropologist ke bare mein no sociologist it was below 0.5 percentage psychologist it was around 0.5 percentage but economist it had reached 1.5 percentage how many times it was mentioned it was mentioned 1.5 percentage times so it must speak about economics this is what is the role of economist so having understood all these things i hope you will enjoy your journey in economics and if i if you really give your time if you really give your sweat if you give your honesty to economics one day you will be among those pictures which i showed you on top you can be tomorrow's manmohan singh you can be tomorrow's raghuram rajan you can be tomorrow's amartya sen so this is what i want to see in you all so with this friends i stopped the class and uh, i really enjoyed this class and i hope even you have enjoyed this class so with this tata and bye bye see you in my next session I have referred Microeconomics by Gregory Mansfield. This is the only book where I got most of the material. So, chalo, tata.